this video, I'm going to very quickly explain how we can use a calculator when we're trying to do trigonometry questions. So obviously all calculators look a little bit different. This is just an example of what yours might look like. Here at the top, I've got what's called a key log. So that is just going to show exactly which buttons I press each time. And here we've got a bigger version of the screen, just in case you can't quite see what's going on up there. So hopefully this will show you what I'm doing. The buttons that we're interested in for trigonometry are around here on most calculators. We've got sine, cos and tan there. And so for the large part, it's quite simple to use. If I want to do, say, sine of 56, then I just need to click the sine button, 56, and then close my brackets. And it will tell me what that is. Now there is one problem with what I've just done, and that's that my calculator was not in the correct mode. It is really important that when we're doing trigonometry questions, the calculator is in the correct mode. I can tell this one isn't in the correct mode because there's a little R at the top here. R stands for radians, which is a different way to measure angles and not the way that we're measuring angles at the minute. We are currently using degrees instead. So I would like that letter to be a D. So to change that, I'm going to need to go into setup, which is just in little yellow letters here. It says setup. So to get to the yellow letters on a calculator, I have to press shift first, then setup. And on this particular calculator, it's given me options. Uh, that won't always happen on a calculator. Sometimes it will just be the next thing that's on the screen. But you're essentially looking for the word degrees. On this particular calculator, I'm going to have to press angle unit first. So I'm going to click two. And then here we go. Degree is the thing I'm looking for. I want to be in degree mode. So now I am. And if I press equals, I'm going to get a different answer. See, there we go. Completely different. It is really important that you're in the correct mode because otherwise the numbers you get as answers are completely different. Now, obviously, this is a, a horrible decimal. It actually goes on infinitely after this. This is just an approximation to a certain number of decimal places. Normally in a question, it will tell you how many decimal places they want their answer to. But if it doesn't, then I would say two is a pretty good rule of thumb, maybe three. But essentially, yeah, that's how we use the sine and cos and tan work in exactly the same way. If I click on cos, then 56, close brackets. That's going to tell me what the cosine of 56 is. And if I do tan of 56, that's going to tell me what that is. Now, the other thing we need to be able to use are the inverse functions. So the inverse functions are in yellow just above their counterpart, just above the normal version of that function. So for instance, if I want to get to sine, inverse sine over here, I'm going to click shift because it's yellow. I'm going to click shift, inverse sine, and then whatever I want to type in. Now you notice if I go for my standard 56 again, we're going to hit a problem. Calculator doesn't like that. And this is actually quite a nice way to tell if you've done something wrong, is if the calculator tells you that it doesn't make any sense. Now I know that 50, sign, uh, inverse sine of 56 doesn't actually make any sense, and you might want to start considering why that would be true. So instead I'm going to go for inverse sine of 0 0.5. That's going to work, that'll be fine. And it tells me it's 30, lovely. I can do the exact same thing with cos, so shift to minus one, 0 0.5 equals 60. And with tan to the minus one, 0 0.5. There we go. So that is how we can use a calculator when we're dealing with trigonometry questions. So the key points from this video, these functions are really complicated. You're not expected to just be able to pull that 
eight decimal places off the top of your head. We do need a calculator for most trigonometry questions. Calculator has to be in degree mode for this to work. If it's in a different mode, radians or gradients, then it's not going to work. And finally, to access the inverse functions, you will need to press the shift button first.